Today I'm going to show you how to turn anyone into a 3D stylized character. Specifically, I'm going to show you how I turn Cristiano Ronaldo into a Fortnite style character. Like most things we cover, there's a lot of different methods for achieving this. So first, I'm going to info dump some useful things that I found online so that you can pick and choose what works best for you. Then we'll hop in and I'll show you step by step how I turn Cristiano Ronaldo into a Fortnite character. So no matter what method you choose, step number one is to create a base mesh. Obviously, easier methods will cost you more money. Harder methods will cost you more time. The easy method is using paid plugins. I recommend either Face Builder or Face Gen. You input pictures and they output a facial mesh. But there is a catch. Both of these softwares cost around $150. So if you don't want to spend any money, with a quick Google search, you can find a bunch of stylized base meshes that you can download online. You just need to find the one that you like, then use either Blender or ZBrush to alter it so that it matches the likeness of who you want it to be. And of course, we're going to show you how to do all that in this tutorial. Another great tool for this that is free is Daz. It's a free software for 3D characters and clothes. So for example, if you wanted a 3D Pixar style character instead of a Fortnite character, you could go to their marketplace, pay $20 for these stylized base meshes, and then follow along with me to alter them to your liking. Okay, so now onto what I did to create my 3D character. And like most people, I like taking the easy route on things. So first things first, to get my head mesh, I used this face gen software. I talked about this a bunch, it's $150, again not necessary for you to get. You could always start with a human head and use reference photos to achieve the exact same result as face gen's output. It just saves a bit of time. So once I have my facial shape in face gen, I just export this out, it actually goes straight into Daz. I'm going to open up Daz, again a free download. I just have to go to this head tab under shaping and then find the slider that says Ronaldo or whatever you named it in face gen, crank that up, remove all the parts of the body so I'm only left with the head and then export this out and bring it into Blender. Let's fire a Blender. I'm going to import back in that head model. And now we can start shaping this into a Fortnite style character. So I'm going to use some cheat codes to make this process a lot easier. If you check the link down below, you guys can download this free application that will allow you to port any Fortnite skin, emote, or prop into Blender. I'll also link this tutorial here that will help you set this up in case you guys are having any trouble. It's only about 5 minutes, so it should be a quick and easy download. I'll just port in a Fortnite character. First, I'm going to remove the eyes off of our old mesh and then bring in the Fortnite eyes from our ported in mesh. So select our old mesh, click tab to go into edit mode, and then click on the eyes and click control L to select linked. Go ahead and just click delete and delete the vertices and repeat that for the other side until your eyes are removed. Now let's do the same with our Fortnite ported model. I'm going to go ahead and select the Fortnite model and then I'll go into edit mode. I'll select the eyes again, click control L to select linked, right click and then separate them. So they're separated from the head mesh. And then I'll just click G and move them over to our head shape. Great. So now we just need a skin texture for our character. If you've never done this part before, this will probably be the most time consuming part of this tutorial. But trust me when I say that once you get the hang of this, it gets a lot easier. So to create our skin, we're going to use texture painting to give it that hand painted cartoony Fortnite look. So first off, let's select our head here. We're going to go down to our material properties. And then we're just going to delete all of these Genesis 8 face maps that came from Daz. Again, if you're working with a base mesh, you might not even have any of these skin textures. Just click this button until we have our blank canvas here. So we're going to click to create a new material. And I'll just go ahead and name this base skin. And now let's switch over from our timeline view. Just click this button and we'll switch over to our shader editor so that we can set up our texture painting and give ourselves a base color to work with. All right, so we're going to start off by clicking shift A and we're going to search for an image texture node. Let's go ahead and just click new and then we'll go ahead and name this skin base and we'll change the width and height to 3072 by 3072. And then here we can click and select the color we want for our skin. So we'll just take this and make it lighter and then choose something maybe around here. We can alter this a bit later and then connect this skin base to our base color. All right. So next we're going to repeat those steps. So we're going to click shift a search for an image texture node, and this is going to be for our texture painting. So we'll click new again, 3072 by 3072. But this time, instead of having a preset color here, we're going to make this transparent so we can color over on the alpha. So we'll click. We're going to take this A value here under HSV and just set that to zero. And then again, set everything else to zero. And we'll name this skin texture paint. 
So to mix these two nodes together, we're gonna need a mix RGB node. So again, click shift A and search for mix RGB. We're gonna disconnect this. Now for our skin base, we're gonna put that into the color one slot. And then for the texture paint, we're gonna put that into the color two slot. Also make sure you take the alpha for our texture paint node here and connect that to the factor. Now we can take the color and connect this to our main principal BSDF base color. So this should be all set up and ready to go. So let's click on our skin texture paint, make sure that this object is selected and we'll change over to our texture paint tab. All right, so now over on the left, this is our alpha blank skin texture paint image that we've created. So it should be defaulted to mix. What you guys can do is select your colors in the top left. So say for example, you wanna add some red, you can change to red, change around the strength here. You wanna lower that a bit so it's not so much. And if I was to click here, you guys can see it pop up on the face and pop up on the texture here. So this is how we can add in some color and detail to our face. So another free software I highly recommend for anyone who's trying to create the likeness of someone is Pure Ref. It's just a little drag and drop reference so you can place in any pictures or multiple pictures. And once you want to place this on your screen, you right click, go to mode and overlay selection and you guys can place this anywhere you want. It just makes it a lot easier, especially when we're paying attention to coloring in skin details. So you wanna be able to know where you want specific colors. So obviously red around the cheeks, etc. This will help a lot. At first I tried painting on the redness of the cheeks and some dark shadows under the eyes, but yeah, it ended up looking like he fell face first into concrete. On my second attempt, I got the hang of it and here's some tips that I learned. I started off by doing some light red shading on the cheeks and then I went over and mixed in a color closer to his skin color. The key is mixing everything over and over in small circles until it looks smooth. If there's too much color somewhere, switch over. Instead of mix mode, go over to alpha erase and get rid of any of that harsh color. This looks fine for now, so let's move on to the lips. For the more intricate painting like lips, makeup, tattoos, it's a great idea to create another new shader so that you don't mess up what you've already painted. I'm gonna go back to my shader editor. I'm gonna click shift A and create another mix RGB node. And then I'm gonna click shift A and create another image texture with the color set to transparent just like before. Go ahead and connect your first little node setup to color one and then select your new transparent image and connect that to color two and then plug that into your principal BSDF. We're gonna use that reference image for colors and we're going to pay attention to the lighting. For example, this light on his lip, I want to try and replicate that. Keep trying, keep pulling those colors and mixing and blending until everything looks good enough for you. All right, so this looks fine for now. We're going to go in later and add a bit more details. For now, I'm going to add in the eyebrows by doing the same thing we did with the eyes. I'll take the eyebrows off of the ported Fortnite model just by selecting them, clicking tab to go into edit mode, click them, and then click control L to select the linked, right click and separate them and then we can click G and move them over to our face. Once we have those in place, I'm gonna go ahead and use Blender's sculpting mode to look a bit more like Ronaldo's eyebrows. So click the drop down in the top left to change from object mode to sculpting mode. Go ahead and use this grab tool and just move them around and give them more of an arch. Again, in my case, use your reference image and just try and replicate the shape of who you're trying to create. Blender has awesome sculpting tools. I really recommend you guys familiar yourself with them because they can help you out a ton in this entire workflow. Next, we need hair. There's a ton of different tutorials out there showing you guys how to make stylized hair using splines in Blender. I'm gonna link some of those below, but if you wanna be lazy, you can just port in some hair and then use the sculpting tools, shape them better to your character's head. Again, I'll go in here, I'll find hair that's similar to Ronaldo's in this picture. I'll click import into Blender, and then I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to sculpting mode with that selected, use my grab tool, and I'll just pull it so that it's not sinking or hunting into the head mesh at all. All right, great. So now we can paint on these sides of the hair and I'm going to do this the same way we did the skin. For some reason, whenever I'm painting over the ear, the UVs sort of bleed together. So to fix that, I just went into edit mode, selected the faces of the ear that were being painted over unintentionally, and I signed those faces a new material. To do that, just go to your material mode, click to create a new material, click the color of that material and make it a color that's similar to the skin color and then select that new material and click assign. Now for our body. Fortnite has a bunch of soccer skins or football skins, wherever you're from, that are perfect for this. So I'm gonna port those in and then I'll delete the head. 
I'll go ahead and move my new head over into place. So just click shift, select all the parts of your head, click G and move that over. Don't worry about connecting anything for now. We'll cover that when we rig this and talk about animation. For now, I'll just use that same trick I used on the ear to make the skin of the legs and hands match our face. I'll go into edit mode, I'm going to turn on x-ray mode so I can select everything in the front and the back. And then I'm going to select the legs and the hands. Go to my material section, create a new material that's close to the color of our skin, and then I'll assign those selected faces to that new material. Great, so at this point, my main priority is making this look as much like Ronaldo as possible. But here's some things I did to achieve that. I went back into texture painting and I added in some more details so his facial structure looked a bit more pronounced, mainly some shadows under his cheekbones and jaw to emphasize them a bit more. Then I resculpted the eyebrows and lowered his hair down a bit just to make his facial shape a bit more boxy. It's amazing how something as simple as making the eyebrows match up can be when it comes to recreating the likeness of someone. So pay attention to your reference photo, analyze it, tweak over and over and over until you get things looking the exact way that you guys want it. So here is my Fortnite Ronaldo. It's not perfect, but you guys have some wiggle room. We're not going for photorealism. We're going for a more cartoon stylized rendition. So two last things that we need to cover. One is how to alter these Fortnite textures to make your clothing look the way you want. And two is rigging and adding animation. To alter your textures, this is pretty easy. Just go to your materials and you wanna find the packaged bake texture that is included whenever you port your model in. Find the file location like this and then copy that path. I'm gonna go over to Photoshop now. I'll click open and I'll paste in that path that we just saved. We want to first open up the diffuse texture here. You guys can easily remove logos by using this clone stamp tool in Photoshop. Just all click and then paint over. If you guys don't have Photoshop, you can also use a free photo editing software. They all pretty much do the same thing. We're just painting over logos and changing colors. You can also use your selection tools and an HLS adjustment to change the colors. Once you're done customizing, save this as a PNG and then go back into Blender and open up your shader editor. You just need to drag and drop in your custom texture map and replace the diffuse map that's connected into that principal BSDF. You'll notice you may need to alter the normal maps as well if things were embroidered. So just rewind a bit, use those same steps, but this time open up the normal map and then again use that clone stamp tool to cover up any of the patterns of the logos. Great, so now all that's left is animation. I'm going to first show you how to add any Fortnite emote using that porting software that we've been using onto our custom character. And then I'm going to show you how you can add in your own custom rigs and animations like the iconic <laughs> all without a mocap suit. So to get the Fortnite emotes onto here, we need to join our model. I'm going to first save this project and then I'm going to save as this project because we're going to make a bunch of changes. And if we make any mistakes, I want to be able to come back to this project where everything's separated so I can alter specific parts. So once you've done that, we need to join everything together. You just hold down shift and start clicking all of the parts of your model. Then you click control plus J to join them together. You guys will notice that the skin gets all messed up. So let's click control Z and I'll show you how to fix that. Go to object properties and then go down to the UV section. You need to make sure that each of the parts you're joining have the same name for their UVs. So just select them all and name them the same thing. Now, once we shift click and select all of those parts and then click control J, we're all good to go. Everything's looking the way it was before we connected it together. So next, let's go into our Fortnite port software and reload in that soccer skin. I think it was called Powerful Poacher. You guys can search in the search bar for anything that you need. Once that's imported in, we don't need the mesh. We just need the armature. If you guys can't find the mesh. It should be a child of the armature. So go to your object bin here, click open the armature, find the mesh and delete it. If you guys want, you can reposition the parts of the facial rig so that it matches up to your new custom face a bit better. So once you're ready to connect the rig and the armature, you want to hold down control and select your customized Fortnite body first, and then still holding down control, click on the new armature rig that you just ported in second. Click control P and parent them together with automatic weights. Now, if you go into pose mode, you should be able to move these joints and the mesh should move with it. So we have our Fortnite armature. We're rigged and ready to go. Let's add in a Fortnite emote. Go ahead and select the armature. We're going to go back into our porting software. Go to the emote section. I'm going to use this fancy footwork emote that dropped with the Neymar Fortnite skin. 
Just click send to Blender and there we go. Now there's a few issues here. We have some deforming going on. Fortnite's a family friendly game, so we definitely don't want this happening. Let's click the armature and go into pose mode. Click on this little bone tab and then uncheck deform and we're good to go. The only other thing I did from here is some simple cleanup. If the neck is poking out at some points from whenever you connect it to the body, you can just go into edit mode and delete any of those faces that are jutting out. I also found this random floating piece that probably messed up when I parented the mesh to the rig. To find what part that specifically is, we can go to the armature modifier and you can check on these boxes to be able to tab into edit mode and just select and delete it straight from this view. And there you guys go, this looks great. Let's now move on to custom animation. Now, instead of taking you step by step here, I'm gonna point you guys to a bunch of other videos I've made talking all about different methods for adding in your own motion capture. My last upload actually talks about Rococo's new AI software that lets you extract mocap from any video. So I recorded my best attempts at a Plug that into Rococo's video AI, and then I used the Rococo Blender add-on to retarget that onto my character. If you wanna learn how to do that, just click on the screen or in the bottom of the description. I can take you through step-by-step -step how to do that. Of course, you don't have to use that method. There's easier methods like using Mixamo, using paid plugins to rig from scratch, or investing in a mocap suit. So figure out what works best for your needs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I took extra time this week making this because it's something I had a lot of fun doing. I really wanted to dive deep. I've always been intrigued by those music videos that have those awesome 3D cartoon characters. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, slap like on the video to help with the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below anything you guys wanna see next from me. And of course, subscribe to stay up to date with more educational content like this. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.